How you guys doing? My name is Colter Day. I'm the owner and founder of Borderland, along with my wife, who's behind the camera. Thank you, Rochelle. And we're excited to talk to you a little bit about the Trapper Packs today. There's been a lot of posts on social media so far. We've been to a trade show or two. What we haven't done is on social media, come out now and really dive in deeper about how these packs work, how they're made, um, some of the features that you guys are going to see in these packs for yourselves. Um, how to choose between a regular size like I'm showing here or an XL size like this elk is on behind me. Why did we create the XL? All these things that you guys um, would be wondering to make the purchase for yourselves, we're going to cover today. What I'd like to do is kind of break this into like three different parts. This first video, I'd like to talk about the packs themselves, how they're made, a little bit of history behind how we started that, why we started to make these, and then some of the features. We're going to get into what you're going to be getting out of the pack, functioning straps, what it's made out of, etc. That's what we're going to do right now. So basically, Borderland was created out of a need for recognizing that there are an antique turn of the century, um, close of like the 19th century trapper pack frames that have discontinued to be produced. And they're now antiques. They're making their way into history and no one has really brought them back. And as a hunter myself, I have collected animals, be it shed antlers or European mounts, and I wanted to find a better way to display them. Um, there's a lot of unique ways to display them right now, but nothing really jived with me. I didn't really like the look of a white skull on a white wall. And as I was looking and looking online, different ideas, there's some great creative people out there, be it taxidermists or, or guys who are trying to honor and remember their animals in a unique way. And I saw a pack frame with an animal on it with the cape rolled up. And people are calling those dead mounts. We're kind of calling them now pack mounts. Anything that you place an animal or sheds onto, onto a pack, it's a pack mount. And when I saw that look, I said, I want to get that for myself. I really like that. And it was so hard to find. I found out um, that there's a few different designs out there that discontinued ever being used, of course, as we got into metal frames, aluminum. Um, now we all are in the, the days of carbon fiber and such. But these were truly an innovation back in the day. Got my hands on a pack and I wanted an, another one and it was several hundred dollars on eBay. I honestly believe I paid over $300 to find this antique version. And when I saw it and knew that there was truly a company was not making them any longer. This company that made this particular pack was in 1910 and they produced them through part of World War II and then they, they just weren't ever around any longer. And so basically what you're seeing here is a recreated pack um, that is truly authentic structurally as well as um, aesthetically here. And so here's the pack. Um, we are calling this the Trapper. Uh, this would be the Trapper original. And this original size comes to the, as the exact same dimensions as the original uh, Trapper pack that was produced um, in Seattle, Washington by a company named Traeger Manufacturing. And so this was a really iconic look. There's older type of packs. There's wicker basket frames. There's actual pack boards where a, a bent piece of wood was literally against your back. What was so unique about this pack is that it was actually an innovation at the time because there was not cotton duck canvas at the time. And eventually once canvas was created, taking a bent oak frame or a bent wooden frame and stretching the canvas around it got that load, that actual weight off your back and you didn't actually feel the board against your back. And so this feeling on your back is actually quite unique and people try them on at trade shows and whatnot. The, the straps are actually functional. And although it's not necessarily designed to be worn, it's completely created the exact same way. And so it's kind of fun, guys will wear them. Some people have said they've taken them shed hunting or they've um, you know, wanted to take them, take them hunting just to get them dirtied up before they end up putting them on the wall. So. They're actually completely structurally the same, like I said. So these, these straps, how they're connected, how they're attached with blued or iron tack nails to the, to the oak is all identical. Okay, so that's a little bit about the history and kind of why we decided to make them is we wanted to be able to use them for ourselves, essentially. We made a couple for gifts for, for uh, fa family and friends, and that led into recognizing that there's a need here, and it's hard for people to still have this look. And we felt like if we didn't, recreate these then they would eventually just vanish altogether or become all the more rare and we're just lovers of the old old times of the mountain man era of the early exploration of the west and uh, that's what the borderland name spawned from was um, the frontier or the undiscovered a borderland really means the edge of something that is known and a land that is yet to be known 
and we hope that Borderland can represent for you um, being able to reach beyond what you're comfortable with, beyond what you know, and into places that are wild and unexplored. And even if it's just unexplored for yourself, it's still entering that borderland. And so um, we hope that this piece becomes a part of your home and, and it can help to enhance the animals that you, that you cherish and those memories that, that you uh, hope to, to remember by. So we know that doing so on a trapper pack is gonna look super unique and you're really gonna love the rustic, however, the clean and modern look that this provides. So thank you very much.